Hey there, Brendan from TAP. Well, I've got a problem vehicle here. I just want to show you a good example of utilising our webinars. So the electrics and electronics webinars that we've got out there give you some great um, fundamental knowledge. When we're dealing with something like this, an LDV, which may make you wince because you know you're probably not going to be able to get service information, you're probably not going to be able to get wiring diagrams, where do we go? Well, with a bit of circuit knowledge, there's still hope. So to give you a bit of background on this LDV, it's a G10, which is the, the diesel engine, um, got towed in, could basically not run. Um, a little bit of testing, it got to the bottom of it being an airflow issue, which you know a lot of things pointing to that that we'll look at math-wise, but I found that the DPF is actually completely blocked solid. Taking an oxygen sensor out, we can actually run the car, but we still need to find the fundamental fault of why that DPF blocked. So if you come down to the scan tool and take a look at a little bit what I got set up here, we've got a fault code and uh, basically to summarize it it's the mass airflow sensor um, intake air is not reading as it should now obviously the first thing we're going to do is take a look at some live data in this case i'm just in obd because we're just dealing with the mass airflow sensor so no reason to get uh, too convoluted with manufacturer data so obviously reading negative 40 is not a good reading um, the math itself is reading 177 grams per second at key on engine off and when I start the car we get no change so we've definitely got some odd things going on here now if you come back a bit so you can see what I've got set up here um, I'll go down the line but basically um, I've back probed into these and we've got 12 volts and earth which we still need to prove and this guy here that we're actually on on the multimeter now is near enough close to a, a 5 volt whereas this one's down at about 0.3 so taking this one that's stuck up close to 5 volt firstly um, that one we're going to try and prove exactly what's going on there because right now we don't really know what's supposed to be on these wires so what I'm going to do is take a test light and in this case with using the webinar and knowing a little bit about circuit um, design there's a couple of ways that they could do this intake air temp so we could have five volts that's basically going through a resistor in the PCM coming down to this resistor in the intake air and as that intake air resistor changes that's going to change the voltage drop in between the two resistors which is going to change the reading in the scan tool. Now if that were the case then this test light which is on battery negative putting that on there yes it's going to take it down to zero volts but I would see a corresponding change going on there so I know that's probably not the circuit they're using. Another option could be if I'm still on battery negative You'll see I start to rapidly tap this now. And lo and behold, we start to get an intake air temp reading. So that tells me um, that we, we must be using a frequency on this. So this mass airflow sensor, its job is to utilize the power in ground, and it's going to create a frequency that's going to, well, more so it's going to be pulling it down to ground to create this frequency back to the ECM. And when it sees specific frequency, that's where it knows the temp. So I've just proved my wiring integrity, my PCM, all those kinds of things, right? Really, we know that we've got five volts there. Um, the main thing that I want to prove is that we have a stable earth supply to this math because certainly it's not going to be able to pull down to earth if it doesn't have an earth to pull down to. So, as I said, I'm happy with the 12 volts over the other side. I've, I've looked at that. This guy here, if we were really lucky, you might see ghost voltage. So you'll see as I, I wave my uh, lead around, we're seeing a voltage there. And a nice way to tell that you're in a true earth is you'll often see this stabilize and you won't get ghost voltage now i'm not particularly confident with that at this one you know the difference between there and in there still could be a little bit of doubt so all i'm going to do in that case is again take my test light we're going to go off of negative and put it onto battery positive now and if i've got a good earth there we should light up so i'm putting some load through the circuit i've got the ignition on obviously while i'm doing this so you know the uh, that fact that we had a voltage drop test going on through there and we were close to zero volts is pretty good evidence that we've got a good earth but if you want to double up put a bit more load through there I'm, I'm confident there's definitely nothing going on there so um, as you can see you know basic type circuit like that a math yes we don't have any service information but utilizing some of the the information that we get uh, for the fundamental knowledge on electronics in the webinars it's an easy diagnosis this thing definitely needs a math um, as I say, we could do a similar test and you'll see a similar thing happening on the, the MAF sensor itself as opposed to the intake air. Um, for a bit more information on what's happened on this thing, uh, they went through some flood water. The air filter is completely soaked with water. 
After that, the intake track doesn't look too bad. He's been driving it for a couple of days, he says, but obviously it's got some water on the map. That's distorted the reading. The thing is, absolutely no idea what airflow is going in there, and it's just kept going until it's blocked up the DPF and he's rolled to a stop. So, a bit of circuit knowledge there, guys. Check out the webinars, and it applies to mechanics just as much as it does to auto electricians these days. Thank you.